welcome, dear viewers, to Couch Warrior TV on YouTube. I am the Couch Warrior, and you are watching The Passage, a Skyrim SE Let's Play featuring Etienne Jorel, the Altmer Ranger. When we last left off, we were about ready to embark on our mission, our rescue mission. And uh, before we get started here, Let's first do a couple of things. Um, let's actually review our mission. Okay. Rescue citizen Dengir. Okay. So we are looking for Dengir of Stun, who has been abducted. So... All right. We are told that he is being held in this location. How the Jarl got that information, we don't know. But one thing we do know about Jarl Sidgir is he seems to be fairly well connected in the underworld, from what we can determine. So I guess it's not surprising that he would find this out. The next thing we need to do is refresh ourselves a bit. So we're going to have a little bit of a light stack snack here. Man, I really got to get rid of this thing. I mean, it just bugs me so much. I love how it's just called fresh meat. Would you call it what it is? It's it's a trunk. It's a mammoth trunk. And it looks anything but edible to me. It's just really gross. And I... I don't know why I still have it. The other thing I want to get rid of these mud crab legs. I'm sure they're spoiled by now. So maybe we'll have an opportunity to ditch this stuff with the bandits. <laughs> All right, so we got a little bit of a, a light snack here. Hey, I just wanted to give you an update. If you remember, when we left off in the last episode, there was some kind of a background process running. I figured out it, it actually was Skyrim that was doing it. And as best as I can tell is there were some... There were some updates going on in the background with regard to uh, either mods that I've got going here or load order or something. I suspect that it, it was it was some kind of a, a background update going on with mods. Just so everybody is clear, um, the mods that I'm using that, that you see listed in the notes for this game, about a third of those mods are coming from Bethesda.net. And the remainder are coming uh, are are coming in from Nexus Mod Manager, and under any other circumstances, I would always say that going with something like Bethesda.net, if you're running on the PC and have the ability to run a mod manager, is not a good idea. However, in my particular case, um, when I started this playthrough, Nexus Mod Manager was not available for SE, and I wanted to use mods right away. And the other thing is, is in my in my capacity as a sort of pseudo-journalist when it comes to the game of Skyrim, I really felt like I needed to have a good understanding of how the Bethesda.net mod install, update, and order process worked. And um, if you have taken the time to listen to any of the panel discussion that we had on Couch Warrior TV last weekend, you'll kind of understand why. Uh, we talked at length about how Bethesda.net mod distribution worked and the pros and cons and the outlook for the console community. It was really just important that I understand what console players are facing uh, where the tool's concerned. So I did take some time um, later on in the Let's Play, right around episode 30 or so, to pull as many of my mod resources off of Bethesda.net and, and get them replaced with stuff controlled through Nexus Mod Manager. But I still have a handful of mods that are that are coming in here through uh, Bethesda.net. So I, I suspect there was some kind of an update going on there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is game time. Now let's take a look here at time check all right there is 
some urgency here. If, if we weren't talking about a person who had been kidnapped, I think that Etienne might consider taking another day to rest. But under the circumstances, I feel as though we've we've dilly-dallied enough. I don't feel like there's anything that we did on the way here that was frivolous. I think all of the stuff that, that Etienne engaged in, all those activities he engaged in on the way here were necessary from his perspective just to make sure that he was well prepared. But still, um, it's taken us a couple of days to get here. Okay, we're going to do something here. We're going to try out our tripwire power. Now the trick, of course, is for anything like this to work, we've got to place it in just the right spot. Key to a saber cage? Note to self, get the key to the saber cage. What is the saber cage? <laughs> It could very well be a cage where they're holding a hostage, so that's good to know. We were a bit thirsty. So, let's take a swig of water before we start this engagement. And something quick to eat. What's quick? The cheese wedge is quick. All right. So the idea with the trip wire is if the enemy hits it, it's going to stagger them. And all that really does is buy us more time. So I want his back to be facing me when I take him out. Now watch. There he goes down. And I can focus on his pal. And Mr. Tripwire gets it in the end. Okay. First time out for the Tripwire. That worked pretty good. Okay. Lost Knife Cage Key. So this is the key he must have been talking about. Orcish Arrows will take... Okay, that's it for that. Oh, look at that. We got more goons up here. Let's scooch in here. Get out of the line of sight. And have a little peek. Now the thing, of course, I have to remember is I always have to remember to go in here and switch back to the powers I really want to use. Otherwise I'll find myself putting trip wires in places I really didn't intend to put them when I'm trying to do stuff like use instincts. Okay, we're going to come by way of the river here, which will be hopefully a bit less expected. All right, and we'll use some potions now, too. I think we can start burning through. Some of these. Oh, man, I think I had him dialed in, but I was too slow on the release. Okay, that had to be short, right? Oh boy, that's frustrating. 
Ooh, much closer and he would have blown our cover big time. Oh, please. Do you? Submit. Submit. Oh, I jacked around too much. I <laughs> got cocky. The hound got cocky. I missed that shot. Should have been a no-brainer. Crumbum ingot. Orcish arrows. Ooh, a Nordic arrow. Why just one Nordic arrow? That's odd, isn't it? phase you think about it I, I guess I really didn't plan it that way but drawing them down here was kind of a blessing given the size of this cavern look at we got guys up there all right there's one right there another one there and we're fighting gravity here so I'm thinking we're going to have to go over their heads pretty significantly. I mean, it seems really light here, doesn't it? Oh, there's another guy walking there. I'm concerned about those guys up there. I can't take out the guy in the bottom because his death is going to be seen by at least two guards up here and I have no idea what's over there. Let's see if I can hit one of these. Nope. Now that went over. Okay, at this point, I'm just taking lame pot shots, so we are going to stop that. We're going to exercise a tiny, tiny little bit of discipline, and we're going to use this invisibility, and we're going to get ourselves to some cover here, right in the center. 20 seconds ought to be enough time to get us right into here. could be a better shot. Still, the, the I feel like um, when we're not foiled by Ariel's curse, I'm much better at the downhill shots than I am at the uphill shots. Small targets. All right. Back to the potions. Let's uh, damage a little health, which is what we like to do. And little marksman action. Okay, I'm going to go low, aim low. That looked like a gut shot to me. Now what's he going to do, though? Got him. He's gonna jump? Are you nuts? All right, we better shift. Okay, let's get up in here. Look at that whole platform over there. Where'd he go? I can hear him. There is movement. God, 
Is I seeing movement or is that just a texture freaking out? See, I'm, w I'm too far out of range for my instincts to help me. Oh, look at that. Where's he going? Well, that's the guy we hit. He's come down here to check things out. Gotcha. Look at that. This guy did us a favor, too, and he stepped into a darkened area. Right. All right, well, we know something now. We know that these platforms here are somehow connected here. Sitting pretty on arrows still. Now I feel like I gotta come back here as far as I possibly can because we've got a guard there and I don't wanna be in front of that light source. That's him right there. That that's dead on his chest, right there. So we're we're fighting uphill a little bit. Down he goes, and there's another one that's revealed himself. He, if he comes to the edge, we're gonna bag him. Right there, there he is. down. We're kind of getting to this cool point, I think, in Etienne's development as a fighter. Where his, his skill with the blades is actually very relevant now. You know, and there are some cases when it's way safer for him to go in close. than it is to toy around with the idea of doing everything with the bow. Okay, there was a guy up here. It's, we've got to fall back into the dark here. Dead. I just need to get a sense for his pattern, because Etienne is looking for an opportunity to kind of pick his way up there. There he is, right there. I'm not going to take the shot because we don't know if he's got any friends in that cave right now. We don't know what's going on. But if he walks back in there... Get into the shadows here. I'm going to listen.
still we're the range is too far for us to determine if there's anyone else in there with her Ooh, mildly hungry oh man we're out of water too we just passed a whole bunch of water Before we take any action, I'm gonna see what's going on in our flank here. Look at that. Throat shot from quite a ways out. That's great. That's what we want to see. I have an arrow. One of my favorite things in this game is how sometimes when you shoot an opponent with a with an arrow that's better than the arrows that they're using and you kill them they suddenly are by default equipping the arrow that killed them because it's it's better than the ones they have on them so They'll have like a whole quiver full of elven arrows and or, or one elven arrow, but it looks like they have a whole quiver full. Sit down. Okay, no movement. It's just kind of a strange thing I've I've noticed. Um, I've noticed it more recently. Maybe it's just because it's been such a long time since I played anything close to the vanilla game. There's somebody right there, and they're looking straight at us. It's kind of surprising that they didn't see their buddy go down. Alright, let's see if we can clear this wooden rail. Nope. Off the frickin' wall behind her. Is she coming down? Must be my imagination. Yes, it's your imagination. Well, she's distracted. Let's try to get into position. Surprise. So for those of you who are curious, um, since this Let's Play started, we've been um, operating at expert difficulty. Now as we approach level 30, I'm looking at bumping up the difficulty uh, to, you know, improve the challenge a little bit. So, I don't know, um, in the next episode, uh, or over the next few episodes, we could be looking at a shift to master difficulty. Normally, I think, well, when I was playing Fleet, for example, uh, the Aranus Arcana story, Fleet also started at expert level, I believe, but we played most of his adventure at master difficulty. And we'd be looking to do that here, too. Uh, although I think in his case, I, I increased the difficulty sooner than we're doing here. Um, Looks like the boss is at it's primarily because I'm just trying to get back into the swing of playing kind of an up-close backstabbing type of a character so but I think we're at the stage where I feel pretty comfortable going up to master and possibly beyond depending on how that goes situation here. 
Okay, I'm going to stay in the dark, go diagonally across here. Alright. A little bit concerned. Here. I feel like there's too many here for me to handle all at one time. So I'm going to try to isolate this guy, take him out, and then see if I can take some kind of a back way in. Okay. Let's do marksman for good measure. There we go. I'm going to try to get a body count. I see at least three. Okay, that one there, and then there's a table with two sitting at the table. Let's just try to stay in the dark. potions. Kind of getting to the point where I think we're going to have to go to a city and start selling off a lot of potions. We get encumbered with potions before too long here. Okay. Etienne is going to attempt to scale this. <laughs> um, let me use our... Come on. Make it to the bridge. To the bridge. Oh, there we go. Our goat-like, mountain goat-esque skills. See, now look it. He's got elven arrows equipped, but is that what he actually had? No, he had iron arrows. He's got one elven arrow, and it's through his head. I just think that's sort of amusing. Tribunal mask. Hmm, cooked beef. I have some characters who would probably not take that beef because it's been in a bandit's pocket, but I'm thinking Etienne doesn't give a crap. He's not that squeamish. Squeam off. Look at this. Look at the implication of this entire setup, right? It looks like someone has had their arm cut off and there's chairs placed around as if they were spectating. So, this is not good. This sort of reminds me of... Let's... Send their loved ones a finger, so they know that we have... them captive, kind of a thing, right? Look at... see the boots. Ugh, oh, sucks for you. Make it quick. No point in needless suffering, even though these guys are scum. Songs of the Return. Taking that too. Songs of the Return is kind of cool. That's that's another piece of interesting Nordic lore having to do with East Grimoire, which I'm pretty sure Etienne would be interested in as well. Ocean. Okay. All right, this is a good little hidey hole in case we have to make a retreat. Although if we find ourselves backed into that corner, things have probably gone very wrong. <laughs> Let's 
some things up and about. All right, this looks to me like the perfect shooting gallery setup. So at this point, we are going to damage health. Dirty rat. Let's watch where we're walking and get right back here against this wall. Stop. Okay, now it's time to go full on potion time. I'm gonna stick with damage health for now. I've got a slow, couple slow potions I think will be useful, but uh, I don't wanna burn them quite yet unless I know for sure I'm gonna need them. Now, now is when we need. I don't know why she didn't take a shot at me. I was in full view and she obviously saw me. But she hesitated, and that cost her. And here we have... another person from the Nude Mages Guild, although I say this guy is not as flamboyant as the last one we ran into for obvious reasons. It's an elven sword, though. We're very close to our maximum carry capacity here. Which is kind of a shame. We may have to trade some things up depending on what we discover in here. Okay, so one of you uh, lovely viewers clued me in that by harvesting from pheasants I can get crafting feathers for making my arrows. Thank you so much for that. So that's what I'm doing. Did I get this one? I did. I also got a rabbit. More pheasants. Lots of garlic. Lots of cheese. I'm feeling like I don't need any more cheese in my life at this point. All right, anything behind the counter? Let's take a second look here. Nope. Alright, so far so good. Our infiltration has gone relatively smooth. There have been a couple of little hiccups, but um, that's really kind of how this all works, right? I mean, it's if you're doing it right, hopefully it's 70% planning and, uh, you know, 30% thinking on your feet. Okay, now we're encumbered. That's fine. Okay, Vader Prince. Brief history of the Empire. Whether or not he's interested in this one depends on what it's about. Hmm. 
I'm thinking... Maybe not this one. He's not really interested in Pelagius. He's interested in, in Talos, so we're probably... We're ta probably talking about uh, Brief History of the Empire Volume 1 is what he wants. Gentleman's Guide to Whiterun. Okay, so we're going to take this chest and we are going to ditch some things that are bogging us down. Hmm. Get rid of that for sure. Deadwood's got to go. Kindling can go. That makes it a little bit better, but I mean, since we're here, I'm just going <laughs> to double check. Sometimes I mistakenly pick up items of clothing and things like that that I didn't intend to. So. The other thing that we could do, too, is... Um, well, no, I think we're good. All right. We've got to figure out where they're holding our guy here. And I'm a little bit concerned because I feel like we're, we're probably very close to yeah, stamina regenerates 30% slower for 30 seconds. That's just because we drank wine, because we're out of water. Mild fatigue is hurting us. Mild hunger is hurting us right now. That is our hostage right there. Alright, let's... Ideally, it would be great if we could let that saber cat out to create a distraction, but I'm afraid the saber cat might kill our hostage. There's a guy there. Oh, there's another one at the table. So we got one, two... Three, four. What are you waiting for? I know you oh, over there, five. All right. What I'm wondering is if I can shut the cage where the hostage is, effectively locking him in. I feel like, just for roleplay's sake, I need some kind of distraction to pull this off. Right there. So I'm going to put an arrow in that bandit there, which will hopefully attract this one. Then I'm going to slip over here and I'm going to close this. If it stays closed, in other words, if the prisoner is unable to open it, if it stays closed, then we're going to release the saber cat and then see what madness ensues. If not, then I'm going to modify my plan, but I mean, at that point, they're all going to be on high alert, so...
Wouldn't you know it. Oh, shit. There's another one. Oh, it's bringing these from over here. That's not what I expected. The one I wanted to move didn't. That one up there, she must be kind of dense or something. We gotta take some decisive action, I feel like. 30 seconds of invisibility, that ought to get the job done. Okay. Okay, it's staying closed. Let's burn another invisibility. Oh man, our hostage is out. Okay, this is a good position right here. Let's uh, set ourselves up for success, shall we? So, Fortify Marksman will use at the very last. Well, let's think a little bit more creatively. Let's make sure we know everything we've got. Could actually be a good time to use something like an illusion-based frenzy, but again, we're not talking about level 5 opponents. There's just no way that that's going to work. So, I really don't have any other terrific options. <laughs> Slow, we're going to keep that in our back pocket in case they charge us and we can't take them down fast enough. So, health, Marksman. Look at them all. Well, they... Okay, here we go. So, Marksman. Slow. Yeah, block the path. Anybody there? That's why I picked that spot. So I could fall off. Okay, we finished that guy off. Okay, unfortunately, I think we've gotten ourselves into a sticky wicket here. We may have to jump in there with oh, that madman. Okay, and we have, I think, successfully burned through all of our invisibility. Be much easier for me to tell if I had a way to search my inventory, but I just don't. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Must be my imagination. Who's next? There were a lot more of them down here than actually I expected. That's our hostage right there. I'm willing to bet. That's not a bandit.
Now I wonder what would happen if I let the lunatic out. Would he take some of them out in his rage? I don't know, I don't dare do it. I feel like there should be one more. I like how they all have just kind of barricaded themselves up here to, to, to avoid the leader of their bandit clan. It's kind of crazy. He must... I think he's on some kind of a skooma-fueled rager right now. All right. I thought there was one more, but it's possible that that could have been the hostage also running around in that mob. And it gave me the impression of a different body count. I like baked potatoes. Sabercat didn't last as long as I thought he would, but there were more bandits than I figured as well, so... We hiding out down here, right? Oh, master level. <clears throat> Alright. Well, good practice. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Right there. Oh, boy. Just be off by a hair's breadth. Well, gotta go the other way. A little bit more. There it is. Not too bad. Gold, good. Filter of the warrior, nah. Glass arrows, good. Ugh. Huge, heavy ass glass battle axe, bad. Novice robes of restoration, lightweight, good. Staff of flesh. Sure. So that's definitely going to put us over on weight. So weight of 25, value of 1342. So the question is, I'm sure we've got other weapons here that are pretty uninteresting. We've gotten rid of all like the really crazy dead weight stuff. Um, pelts, got to keep them because we need those for training. So I've got I've got all these daggers. For some reason the Nordic bow I want to keep. I think I think Etienne would keep the bow. He'd be intrigued by the design. It is of Nordic make after all and he might want to study it a little bit. This heavy old shield. Why the heck did I take it? Why didn't I sell it? That's the, the issue. Right? I should have sold it right away. Okay. This bronze tribunal mask. 
not worth keeping. This witch plate stuff, probably not worth keeping either. But we'll reserve judgment on that. Um, mainly, I think just think it would be nice to have the, uh, the enchantment off that. Since we are now in the business of learning how enchanting works. It may not be an enchantment that we would use on our gear, but it would be nice to kind of dissect it. Figure out how it, how it functions. <clears throat> All right. All right, this is our last... Sorry, pal. Fish in a barrel. This isn't very sporting. However, I've got other obligations, which is to maintain the safety of this guy. I gotta get him out of here, and I can't... If I get, like, all full of bravado and jump down there and try to take him on mano a mano or whatever, that could go badly. Oh, that is bogus. That too. Hey! That's your best? Huh? Hello? Who's there? Gotcha. I wasn't sure what he would do. I think if I had revealed myself and he knew where the shots were coming from, he may have made a run for it or something like that, but uh, he didn't do that. Yeah, he's taken out his own people, man. couple of shots there I should have had him but missed entirely and I at the time I was trying to shoot him I was also backpedaling because I had accidentally walked off the edge of the ledge so that certainly didn't help my aiming at all kind of muffed things up frankly okay so we have accumulated some gear here which is quite heavy however now that I think about it we do have the added advantage at the moment of having cleared out the fortress on the other side of the road, which would allow us to take some of this stuff over there, disenchant it, shed the weight, gain the experience, and move on. So let's talk to our our rescued citizen here and Don't hurt me. You win. You alright? I came to save you. I understand. Alright. So, escort Dengear to his home. Wow, that's a long trek. Um, boy, I do love the Crimson Archer Curus, but it's not really his style. Another Nordic bow. Be careful. Listen, old man, we gotta look this place over. We gotta make sure that it's... We've searched it thoroughly. And it's kind of ironic that I'm even saying that, because I'm probably older than he is. Alright, come on. Let's get moving. Okay, so I'm going to cruise on up through here quick. There are at least a couple enemies here who didn't get searched. Ooh, glad I looked him over. He's got a lot of gold. 
Claws Mercurius is pretty nice. Okay. So everything we ditched there, I'm happy with those decisions. I'm just looking in the chests here in the immediate area again just to make sure if there was anything enchanted that I could disenchant. Um, and we just went ahead and grabbed it. So. Nope. Alright, all good. Okay, so this guy lives in Falkreath. Obviously, that's why Sidgear put out the notice. In fact, this is this is Dengear. This is, I think, the father of Sidgear, isn't it? Or at least the predecessor of Sidgear as Jarl. So, yeah, he's kind of an important fella there. And now we've got this baggage. He screws up our stealth, too, you'll notice, whenever he's in within a certain range. Be careful. Ooh, look at a Nordic sword. I'm not certain he's going to follow us this way. He might end up having to go around because I don't know if he's going to be able to make this jump. Is he going to go back or is he jumping? Oh yeah, he did it. One more. Come on. All right, let's get out of here. This ought to be interesting. Ah. The tanning rack here. Is there anything we can do that would help us? That helps us. I do like that. Okay. Silver cat pelts. Which we will convert to leather. Again, this is probably increasing our weight. Yeah, it is. It's increasing our weight. But it's also helping us level up, which is okay. Fine with that. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of another episode. 
I want to thank you for watching the passage. Um, I am just going to head over to Fort Amal, and we will disenchant some things and shed some weight. That'll make a lot of sense for us. And then we've got to escort Dengear off the Falkreath. I'll see you next time.